Okay, so here's what's great about this 300 gallon tank. And I, it all started with this. I thought we have a, we have this cool shed with this great roof and how can I get water from that into my aquaponics system? So over the last few months, I established a gutter system and with a screen and on top of there is that foam stuff to keep all the junk out of it, which eh, lasts a long time before it has to be replaced anyway. Um, keeps me from having to clean it and it filters all the water before it even gets down to the bottom of here So this is relatively pretty clean water. I mean, there's not much in it gut wise fills up the whole deal And we had a lot of rain this year. So that helped and then what the hardest part was <laughs> I didn't realize it, but it had this thing on it for a long time and that I didn't have I, I didn't notice for some reason, I just didn't notice that I could just take this off, <laughs> you know? So I, I kept looking for an adapter for a hose, you know, like the fire hose or whatever, the quick release or some kind of hose for this, which was silly because I realized that once I unscrewed it, underneath it, it was just like a uh, IBC tank. So then I just, on Amazon, I got this adapter, which which was really great, screwed it in, uh, which enabled me to put a garden hose on it. Little plumber's tape, opened up the valve, run run let the water just gravity feed this is a little higher up not a lot but a little um there's a second hose there so that's not the same hose but I have a little extra i might cut it to size or run it somewhere else inside here but essentially i ran it along the wall back there in my greenhouse all along behind the fish fish tank and then it comes out over here and uh you'll notice that it runs right over here and uh, this, by the way, this is watercress. It loves the aquaponics system. It's insane. Runs right in there anyway, down into the sump. I'll show you that. This is watercress. We're trying some different things this year. Um, stuff is insane. We've had to cut it back a bunch of times. And tomatoes are starting to go. There's some tomatoes in there. Starting to get going here. But you'll notice that what I did, and I'll remove this so you can see. I have that on there, by the way. That lid is, it's there to keep some of the direct sunlight out of here so we don't have as much algae growth and also to keep plants and things from just falling in the sump. So uh, what you're looking at here is the end of that system <clears throat> and this is a sort of like a float switch inside of there. It's an automatic valve that when the water gets above about a centimeter or so from the bottom of that plastic cylinder it shuts off. So you notice there's no water coming out of it at all but the minute if the water gets below that it'll turn on. And I have it just at the perfect height. I can make it turn on for you just by doing this. See that? So it's running. Right? I don't want to do that. I want to kind of keep it in its spot to have it perfect. Right? So the way I set it up is that if it ever gets down to the point where it's a little iffy so that it's getting near the top of that pump or the other pump that I have back in there. So there's another pump in there this one goes to the grow towers and then that's my standard pump so there's two pumps in here and i don't want there to be any chance of the water getting too low when it gets hot in the summer this water start this level starts dropping right and because there's and people say well why do you have to add water well think about it plants take water <laughs> they're drinking up the water all these plants plus there's evaporation when it gets hot and there's and then there could be leaks but i i think i pretty much got rid of all the leaks if there's any leaks they're very very small it's not significant so mostly it's evaporation and the water uh, uptake of the plants so i need to keep these pumps from sucking air if it gets too low and so this is the absolute perfect solution i love it now imagine without this thing what i had to do i had to go out there uh, every day sometimes in the summer in july if it's hot in here you know, 70, 80, 90 degrees, the it, the plants start doing their photosynthesis thing like crazy, growing like crazy, sucking up water, lots of evaporation. And then I'd have to go out there and take buckets of water all the way in here and pour it into each one of these, you know, beds uh, so that it would it would trigger them and kick off the, the auto siphons. And that's the auto siphon is this thing, remember? So when the water gets to a certain height, about halfway in there when it gets to all the way near the top of that it sucks down there in a vortex which uh, it's kind of like a toilet flushing and then it comes in the bottom out there right 
Well, if there's not enough water that, that the, the, the pump begins to suck air, then here you'll hear it gurgling and there'll be air in this line and the water flow will be less, which then makes it so that this never really kicks on. So for example, if this water got all the way to the top, which is, it's not quite there, but it was just not enough water pressure to start the vortex spinning down in here and then sucking all the water in the bed all the way down like a toilet flushing, then it just kind of drizzles. And what happens is the negative of that is that this is drizzling, but it's not flushing, it's not draining. So then imagine all the roots of all of these plants are sitting in water all day long. And I, there's many times where I tried to leave for the day and I come back and go, oh, this thing, and, and it's making sound because it's going glug, 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 glug. And then that one's dripping and the back one is dripping, but none of them are flushing because there's not enough pressure anymore. There's not enough water volume to set one of them off. So this one's starting. You can see it should look like that. See, it's going. Now it's really rushing fast. And that what's happening is this is draining quickly. And then it'll right, it's a flood and drain system. So it goes up and then drains. It goes up and then drains. So as long as that keeps going, the system's great, right? There's a lot of circulation. All of the bubbles, all of that air, that creates a lot of um, oxygenation in the water, which is good for the plants and the fish over in the fish tank. So the beauty of this system is instead of once or twice a day, when it gets hot, I have to bring five to 10 gallons of water every day. I mean, it, it sounds like a lot, but if you think about it, it's not. There's, there's evaporation, of course, and there's a lot going on in terms of plant growth. So some days, if it's not as hot, I won't need to add as much. Other days, I'd have to add more. So and it, it, the fish tank doesn't have that issue. It's, a, it's one constant height. So if we go to the fish tank, you can see, oh, these guys are gonna think I'm gonna feed them now. They're my dogs coming out after me. But that, the water always is the same height there. The water comes in back there. Right now it's coming through both of them because one of them is the grow towers which I haven't even, I have, I got to replant. But anyway, it's running. And then the other one's the main one. So there's a lot of water that's funneling down here right now, back that drains underground back into the sump, okay? So that, this never changes height. This is constant height, one pump system, which I've added a second pump to for fun, for the grow towers. So you never, this, the only thing that'll happen here that's bad about it is if those, if the pump starts sucking air and doesn't have pressure, it'll eventually turn off here and you'll see no water coming out of that, of this. And so that, that's not good for the fish either though, because they want, they don't care about the water flow. There is extra oxygen. Of course, I have an aerator in there, but that, that is not just oxygen for them, a little bit of bubbles, but it's moving the water because they need filtration. So the water leaves the system, the fishy poop water, their dirty water, essentially goes back into the sump, mixes up, goes through the plants, gets filtered by all the plants, and theoretically goes back in here clean. Well, over time it does, right? So the issue with that is that if that ever shuts off, if that pump, you know, if it, does, if it won't start, then you've got a problem with lack of uh, filtration and lack of oxygenation and just stagnation. And that could hurt the fish. It could kill them even if it, if it lasted long enough. So this gravel or whatever media you use in aquaponics is a, is a mechanical filter. So it will filter the, um, it, it will filter all of the water coming in uh, mechanically. In other words, particles that might come in here will, will, will stay in here instead of getting back in there. And then it's also a biofilter because the plants are sucking up, in essence, the nutrients that come from the water that comes from the fish poop, essentially. Fish poop, uh, is turned uh, into using the bacterial bacterial um, uh, responses. There's one kind of bacteria that turns, you know, all of their ammonia that comes off of their their, you know, bodies and poop and everything into nitrites, and then another bacteria turns into nitrates, and the plants eat the nitrates, so to speak. If I'm going to oversimplify the science, right? But there is the all that oxygenation. So you'll notice now, instead of having to come over here to do five or ten gallons, this is always just like that. It within a few inches, and if it ever drops too low, it trickles in some more, and now I don't have to touch it completely, totally automated. So happy, so happy about that. All right, that was my solution. Hope you love it.